Hi, and I want to welcome you again to another riveting series of Second Wind. We're calling this Pursuing Your Dreams. And we have been speaking to Kendall Ramser, and he's a cellist. Did I say your name right? You I said hope it I right. got it. You All right. It right. <laughs> All right. He's a gifted and amazing uh, musician. God has been using him. He's a worship leader. God's been using him in a tremendous. Let me give you a little background on Kendall. Kendall is a graduate of the University of North Carolina School of the Arts where he studied cello with Dr. Brooks Whitehouse, and he received his bachelor's degree. He's also a graduate of Boston University's College of Fine Arts, and he received a master's of music in cello and um, a, a performance with Mark Johnson, right? Mm-hmm. He's a member of my goodness. You just have an amazing history mm-hmm. here. Thank you. He's a recording artist, as I said before. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. He's a composer, pianist, and poet. My goodness. Mm. Um, and, you know, you do a lot of uh, classical R&B, kind of your genre is both classical and R&B yeah, fusion. Yeah, a little bit of a fusion, yes. A fusion of that. And his mission and passion is to create positive, inspiring, and heartfelt experiences through music. And so Kendall had a, an amazing experience where God just opened the door for him to be on the Grammys with Alicia Keys. And that experience just put him, with, without him even planning it, it just put him in this place where, you know, he was able to embrace uh, this divine opportunity. And so we want to just welcome you back, Kendall, to to Second Wind. Thanks so much. Happy to be here. Yes, wonderful. We've been talking about pursuing your dreams. And we spoke in the last broadcast a lot about overcoming fears, how God taught you how to overcome fear. And, mm. and I'm sure that's still always, will fear will always be with us. But once we learn how to do that, we are able then to to move into what God has called us to do. Right. But we want to talk today a little more about seizing those divine opportunities. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, God can present the opportunities before us, but unless we're able to seize them, Mm -hmm. you know, the opportunities can go. Right. Can can leave us. You know, And, and thank God there's always a new beginning. But how are you able to seize opportunities that God presents before you? Okay, I would say it's just always being prepared. Yes. Just trying your best to always be prepared. Uh, you know, don't get lazy. Wow. Because, um, you know, I've, I've, everyone hits those pockets where it's just yes. like, I'm tired. Yes. You know, I've been running for so long. You know, yes. let me just lay down. And then yes. the laying down leads to laying down for a week. And then, you know, so it's... <laughs> procrastination is what we call yes, it. Yes, a lot of procrastination. Yes. Um, so, yeah, just... How I try my how I try to do this is always having small goals, yes. um, so that I'm always pushing towards something. Wow! Because what I find is that whenever I have these little goals goals set in place, on my path on that run trying to to achieve the goal, yes, it's always the Lord always uh, presents another opportunity on the way that if I would not have had that right. goal there for me, yes, or, or set. I wouldn't have practiced. Wow. You know, so it's like many times it's a double blessing. Yes. So I'm, I, I have my view yes. on something, That's but then the Lord, term right, of, that's of, a little yeah, further out, off, but the yes. Lord is like, well, hey, he's he's preparing, he's practicing. Yes. Let me throw these three or four more opportunities at yes. him on, on his way. Exactly. Yes. Unreachable, attainable things. Exactly. They give you a little more um, uh, gratification because you see... Exactly. You, know, you, you see achievement and right. And so it builds you, build con- you up. Builds the the confidence. You know, mm. it's it's been said that it takes seven years mm. to become an overnight success. I like. And that. I think there's some truth in that. Yes. You know, um, even biblically speaking, mm-hmm. that you talk about the work of preparation behind the scenes. I mean, you think about Moses. You know, he was mm. in the backside of the desert tending to his father-in-law's sheep. And he probably, at times, probably wanted to kick the sheep and say, well, what does this have to do with divine purpose? He exactly. knew he had a calling on his life. Right. You know, that he was special after being taken out of the um, the River Nile, mm-hmm. you know, that he was called for a special purpose. But there were those years of, of just being faithful to the small things. And mm-hmm. as a part of the preparation, wouldn't you say, and how has God done that in your life? Right. Well, so this is, um, I I remember whenever I, First graduated. Yes. Um, and, I, you know, I think I spoke in, in, uh, about this in the, one of the other uh, series, but, um, you know, I had, a, I had a dry pocket. Yes. And uh, one of the things that I started doing while I was waiting for my album to be released, I started doing, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I don't want to call it street ministry, I'll call it subway ministry. Oh, right. So I started going into the <laughs> that's subway. below the street. Right. That's what's <laughs> underground. <laughs> so I started uh, myself and a, and a friend of mine who's, who's a guitarist. We started going down into the subways. Yes. And we started playing worship music down there. Wow. 
And it was it was extremely humbling because I'm a classically trained cellist and we're used to playing in these very elaborate halls, you know, yes. these these venues where it's like, wow, am I really here? You know, yes. Symphony Hall, all, this, all these different places. And you rarely see classical musicians going yes. down into the subways. Oh, yes. A very different far cry from uh, e- exactly, <laughs> the symphony. Exactly. Oh. So, you know, I started going down there and it, I just really felt like the Lord was humbling me. Yes. Just like, these are the people, you know, I need wow. you to start really uh, touching. Yes. So we would go down there and Cordero and I, his, my, my friend's name is Cordero, and we would we would pray before we, we played and... And, and, and now we did have a little bucket out there to, to get some change also. Yes, so that was, yes, <laughs> it, yeah. was, it was two things going on there. But trying to make a living. Right? Trying to make a living. Yes. And uh, but as I said, it was a very humbling experience. And yes. we would play and it was just amazing. You know, before we would start playing, just it was just chaotic. People running and rushing, trying to get to where they needed to be. But whenever we would start playing, all of a sudden just peace would just yes. fall in the whole area that we were performing wow. at. And then you would look across the, the tracks and someone would be praising God. Or, wow. And then another lady would come up and say, wow, we were really feeling the presence of the Lord here. Wow. And it just showed me that, okay, this is much bigger than me just playing my cello, yes. um, you know, for a recital. It's like oh. the Lord is really wanting us to to use our gifts to build the kingdom, kingdom to reach yes. into these areas where, you know, many times these people... Uh, yeah. I mean, you run into a lot of different types of people Be in the brought. subway, but you know, you don't, you wouldn't expect to to see no. classical oh, music or yes. um, the most unlikely places. Exactly, that is such a powerful testimony as we talk about seizing opportunity, right? Because oftentimes we have an idea as to what that opportunity should look like, mm. and I think about Jesus. You know how he came down and in sort of the subways of life, the messiness of life, where the common folk were. Mm. You know, and of course, God calls us to all spheres of influence. You know, he calls right. you to Symphony Hall and we're going to talk some more about that and uh-huh. those places um, of prominence that he has placed you. Right. So that's a part of his plan for for your life. Mm. But sometimes we can miss those small places mm. and those opportunities to meet the, the widow or the, you know, or the orphan or, or, right. or, or the drunkard or the prostitute. Right. And right. we can miss those opportunities because we're looking for God. Mm. You know, to show up in a different, exactly. <laughs> a different setting. Exactly. You know, that smells nice. Right. People look nice. You know. <laughs> you right. Know, right. You know? And and he puts us there, and he says, you know, I want you to shine mm. in this dark place. Yes. I want to talk to you a little bit about your philosophy of ministry because we talked a little bit about that um, earlier. Mm-hmm. Because this new album you have, Time, by the way, that's the name of the album, Kendall Ramsur. Spell your last name because it's a yeah. French Ramser. It's uh, R-A-M-S-E-U-R. And that's your website, right? Uh, yes, KindleRamser.com. Yes. Wonderful. But you have a new album. And now this album is not overtly Christian. You, right. know, you are a worship leader. You are a mus- Christian musician. But God has used you and is using you. You believe in what some would call pre-evangelism, mm. where, you know, it talks about, you know, some sow, some water, and mm. God gives ultimately gives the increase. Right. And so every time we witness to someone and they come to Christ, chances are a seed has already been sown. Mm. Maybe a water has already been applied to their lives, and you are the one who's sort of harvesting that seed. Mm. And so it's a process. Right. And there are people who God will call to do all of them, but there are times when God will may say, you be the one who just kind of sows that seed mm-hmm. and that person begins to be open to conversations right. about Christ. Exactly. Talk about how you believe that album is it, it can do that. Right. Well, you know, as you were saying, I'm 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 not trying to I don't feel like it's my duty right now yes. to to at least where I am, uh, you know, musically and what I'm trying to to do is, is I'm not trying to shove Christ down anyone's throat. Yes. Um one one of the things that I've been learning uh, through the street ministry. I, I, so we do the subway ministry, and then I also go out and do some street ministry. Well, you um, get above ground now. Right, a little above ground. So I'm moving up. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, one thing that I've learned is there, there are a lot of wounded people, oh, uh, yes. and a lot of people have been wounded by the church. Yes. Um, you know, just going to the church, churches, and people aren't as welcoming as, you know, Jesus has called us to be. Yes. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, judge, judgmental spirits yes. um, in the church. Um, so in other words, in some ways, Jesus has been given a bad name. Yes, um, yes. I've, I've run into, ex- uh, different situations where I've, I've, I'm trying to share the gospel with, with people and they run, you know, once they wow. hear the name of Jesus and it just shows, it showed me that 
we have to have a plan. We have to have a yes. strategy because yes. um, this whole you need Jesus and yes. that does work. And but, can, you, you know, yeah. we need to have, uh, you know, enough discernment to say, OK, that doesn't work all the time. There has, we have to have a yes. strategy. The enemy has strategies. Sure so does. should we. Yes. Um, the strategy to infiltrate. Exactly. As we should have a strategy to infiltrate. Exactly. His, exactly. Uh, his, so his territory. Yes. Right. So that's what I'm trying to do through my music. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm presenting different um, kingdom principles, yes. uh, you know, loving your brother as yourself, you know, um, uh, you know, like, as I said before, not judging each other because there's a story behind every, every life. Yes. Um, so I'm trying to present just these little, as you were saying, I'm just presenting these little seeds and I'm just praying that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit would then begin to water and, and cause Amen. these things to grow. Um, cause you know, I don't want to offend Yes. Um, uh, Because that turns people away. Yes. Yes. But, uh, you know, I want to be able to uh, approach um, my fans with gentleness. Yes. You know, the the spirit, the the Bible talks about that. Um, And as I said, just just and create the questions. You know, the Bible talks about asking that they will come to you. Mm. You present the gospel in such a way that they come to you and ask you for the reason of the hope that is in you. Exactly. So there are times when we have to go Mm -hmm. and we've heard about the proclamation and tell them. But there's also the evangelism or the reach that is where we create such uh, curiosity mm. that they are like, wow, exactly. what's up with you? Right, you right. You know, you are among us, but you got a hope inside of you. Mm. You're facing some of the same stuff I'm facing, mm-hmm. you know, but somehow the responses are different. You exactly. Know? And, and they, they come and they ask that kind of question. And, and, and you, we talked a little bit earlier, Kendall, about how you believe that this album, Time, mm-hmm. Albie, you want to get this album you know, he's it's, it's a fusion of, of R&B and classical and, mm-hmm. and different kinds of, and the messages are positive messages. But those messages create a hunger. Mm. And and so you, you were talking about maybe inviting friends. You know, you've purchased this album, inviting friends over and listening mm-hmm. and talking about some of the questions that come as exactly. a result of these songs. Tell, tell us maybe about a song or right. a piece of um, it. I'm trying to think what is my favorite one. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure all of them. Yes. All they all over, come with a story. Yeah, they, they all do come with with a story. <laughs> uh, but one of the ones that sticks out to me um, right now is uh, I'm your own. Wow. Um, and I it's funny. I, I wrote the song and I, I can't remember the lyrics, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it, it, it too speaks, many things in your head. Yes. Yeah, a lot going on. But it's it speaks more to um, just us as a people and, uh, you know, how we shouldn't judge each other, you know, how we should have, we should offer each other more grace and more mercy. Uh, You know, people behave how they behave Mm -hmm. because of past experiences. You know, as I said, there are a lot of scarred people. Um, There are a lot of angry people. There are a lot of bitter people. And uh, Mm -hmm. it's just, as I said, just offering more grace to each other. Because at the end of the day, we're all flawed. Um, You know, we all have issues, um, but we have to learn to walk to, to yes, work together, how to, yes. uh, to, we, we have to live in this place, you know, together. So we might as well learn how to, yes. to work together more efficiently yes. and more effectively. So, uh, that, that, that song definitely speaks yes. to that. You know, I, I speak to those that, um, uh, you know, are, 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 uh, you know, dealing with or in the lifestyle or, you know, doing things of prostitution and, yes. and those, those people that have been molested and, wow. uh, you know, just a lot, some pretty heavy, heavy um, kind of, yeah, yes. topics and, and right. issues that right. in, frankly, sometimes the church, mm. speaking about the church in general, I'm not saying every church, right. uh, it hard, is not wanting to face and deal with, but exactly. these issues are in, even in our pews. Exactly. Issues exactly. Like incest, molestation, right. rape. I mean, Yes. Right in the church. And, exactly. And, and we we need to address them, bring them to light so mm. that conversations can happen. And people can, so that can freedom be free. And deliverance, exactly. Deliverance ultimately is what God wants Amen. For, for our lives. And I love that because Jesus came to every strata of society. Mm. Because as you say, we're all wounded and broken in some way. I don't care. You could have a suit on and you, mm. you know. You know, you could be the owner of a Fortune 500 company right. and you could be the homeless person on the streets. Mm-hmm. We're all broken exactly. and in need of salvation. Right. And and even when we come to Christ, there is a process that, you know, we need to continue to make us whole. And, and, and God is using your ministry, mm. I believe, in that process Amen. Of, of, of healing. Well, we talk about seizing opportunity and we talk about the fact that you have to be prepared for when those opportunities come. Right. Talk to that person right now who um, may be presented with an opportunity or looking for opportunities. Mm-hmm. Talk to them about how they can pre- be prepared mm-hmm. to seize that. Well, I, I can I can speak uh, about that. Uh, 
and, and I can just suggest some things. These are things that I've done. Mm-hmm. Uh, is setting goals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, you know, I'm not saying these these big, huge goals, but some smaller goals that are just going to get you working. Yeah. You know, I can I can speak um, more more confidently to those musicians. Yeah. Uh, but you know, this can this can definitely oh, yeah. uh, go out to you know a lot of different different fields. Um, mm-hmm. of, of work, but uh, set set some goal goals that are gonna you know get you going, you know get you you pushing mm-hmm. for something. Yeah. It's good to be pushing for something than yes. nothing. Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, it, it, what what I've found is that the Lord uses that as you're preparing for that goal that you've set up. Yes. Um, he then begins to uh, present other opportunities that you would not have received. Wow. Unless you would have been prepared, preparing, wow. you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's yes. as if you're, you're kind of going up a, a mountain, you yes. know, yes. and, and the, of course the destination is the peak. Yes. But along the way, you know, you've built up, think you've built up all this, this talent, all these, this yes. strength, all this, the skills, uh, that you know, you're able to knock off some well, of these, you know, these that's other funny because you say that because even in a job hunting situation, you're looking mm. for a job. Mm-hmm. And you could prepare you. This is one ideal job that you want, and you're preparing right. for that. And you put all of your energies into that, and l- let's just say it doesn't pan out. You don't get the job, mm-hmm. but there's something that happens in the process of pursuing it. Exactly, you become another, a different person. Exactly, you, you discover some talents, you discover some abilities. Right, and and maybe that job wasn't for you, but what it did to stretch you. Exactly, um, puts you in a better place than you were before. Right, but, yeah. And I mean, and, and a great example of that in, in my life is, as I said, it's just whenever I was doing the subway ministry. Mm-hmm. I never would have thought I would have been down there, you know, oh, playing. Oh. And, you know, I didn't have enough performance experience. I, you know, I, I, yeah. I needed more performance experience. And, you know, down there, you know, there's people that walk by. That, yeah, you can't fail because yeah. some people don't yeah, care. You can't get well, you, <laughs> <laughs> some people don't care. Some people do care. Mm-hmm. And it, it thickens your skin. So I, I agree with you. Wow. You know, you're do something, yes, you know, yes. push for something. I love that metaphor of subway ministry because mm-hmm. I think that that's where God trains us. It's in those um, places that may not be um, the high, mm. lofty, prominent places, visible places. Right. But those are the places sometimes of the most powerful impact mm-hmm. and training. And you build, your, I mean? builds your character the most. It builds your character because if you're willing to be, the Bible says if you're faithful in the least, mm. God can make you rule over many. So right. part of seizing opportunity is being faithful, being able to be faithful in the, the preparation process in the small things. And God's looking and watching to see, all right, how do you treat that thing that is not yours? Exactly. How do you store that thing? You know, maybe you're, you're kind of helping somebody else achieve their dream. How mm-hmm. do you, how do you store that? You know, how do you, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm just saying a hypothetical question. And gotcha. God's looking mm-hmm. to see how you respond to that. Exactly. And he says, now, I, you know, once you're faithful to that, I can make you rule over me. I can give you more. Right. Because you have proven yourself trustworthy. Right, right. To, to, to do the hard thing, to do the subway ministry. Right, you know? right. And so that's a part of the preparation, would you say, in your life. Amen. Yeah, being able to do the subway ministry. Mm-hmm. You know, we talk about... Um, you know, seizing dream. And I think about, I like the story of Esther, you know, mm. maybe it's because she's, she's a woman, but I just like, I like the idea of this orphan, pretty much this person that comes from a very, very humble beginning. She didn't have parents, you know, her older cousin, like more like an uncle is raising her mm-hmm. and, you know, and he's telling her, you know, just play it safe and don't, don't rock the boat. And then <laughs> she's given this you know, like you been given this opportunity, you didn't, you didn't talk about in this particular broadcast mm. to be on the Grammys. You know, mm. your instructor, you know, says, I know someone mm. who, you know, who is gifted and he can, he can do this. They were yes. requiring someone to play. Right? right. And here it is, you know, this virtually unknown person, mm-hmm. Kendall Ramsur. Right. You know, from North Carolina, right? I'm from North Carolina. God opens this amazing door and you're, you know, you're among the greats, if you will. Mm. Mm. And, 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 but you know, you could have you could have shirked that. You could have exactly. said, but you were prepared for that, right? Yeah. What prepared you for that moment? Ooh, a lot. Well, t- well talk yes. a little bit about that moment. I know we have probably about five minutes. Talk a little bit about how you got that that opportunity came to you. I yes, think we didn't talk about it in this particular. Okay. Moment. Yes. So uh, there, uh, my school was putting on a production. Uh, Tchaikovsky's uh, one of his pas de deux, mm-hmm. uh, Swan Lake is from Swan Lake, yeah. and. Um, there are, uh, you know, it's, it's very heavy in, in ballet. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were a male dancer, female dancer, and each each of them needed a a corresponding soloist. So the male needed a cellist, the female needed needed a violinist. Mm-hmm. So as you were saying, you know, they they sent out a uh, an email to the faculty mm-hmm. asking if there there are students that could take you know yeah. do the parts. 
I got chosen. The chancellor of my school was also uh, the founder of the Hollywood Bowl. Mm -hmm. So he was conducting the whole production. Mm -hmm. And we played. Um, you know, we had the rehearsals. They were going well. Uh, we get into the performance and... I had been dealing with a lot of performance anxiety, mm -hmm. um, but just, I just felt it had to have been the Holy Spirit just resting upon me. Yeah. And we, I was able to, to, to play with confidence and boldness and uh, just freedom. Yeah. And uh, so we played and everything just went so beautifully. They call us out on stage. And I just remember just all the hundreds and hundreds of people, you know, standing up and cheering and the yeah. cameras going off. And um, it was just an amazing performance. So that yeah. built my built my confidence. Yes. As I said, this wasn't. This might not have been my my main goal, yes. but it was it was a stepping stone that then got me to the Grammys. Because a week later, yeah. the I think it was about a week later, the chancellor got a call uh, that he was invited to conduct at the Grammy Awards. He had just heard me perform. He says, "I have a student, two students wow. that I would like to invite to come with me. Is it possible?" They said yes. The next week, they fly us out to L.A. Wow. and then it was history from wow, there. Wow, that's powerful. Yes, but you were virtually in an obscure place before. Right. But you were practicing. I was practicing. You know, you, sometimes one a.m. from to wow. you know all day. I was some of my 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 shifts would be uh, maybe eight hours. Wow. Um, you know, it, it was it was tough. Yeah. But um, you know, I found joy in it. Yes. So it it didn't make it yes. as as strenuous. Wow. You, you know, know. You know, I think about that scripture that says, you know, look at that man who prospers in his work. You know. You know, who is faithful in the least. He will not stand before mean men, but God mm. will bring him. God will open doors for that person. Amen. But it's speaking to not an overnight success in like, oh, yeah, I'm talented. And just it booms. It happens. Right. But it's that sense in which you're you're being a stored. You're, you're working in obscurity. Mm. You're being faithful in the little that God has given you. And, and then God opens this door and you're ready for it. Amen. You have from performance anxiety, but you're ready to seize that moment, right. that opportunity, because you've been prepared. Exactly. I want you to pray, Kendall, as we end this broadcast for those who are struggling with opportunities presented before them. Mm -hmm. And they're not able to seize those opportunities mm -hmm. for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Pray for that those individuals now. Okay. As well. Lord, thank you so much um, for all of the listeners, Lord. And I want to pray for those specifically that are dealing with fear and that are mm. afraid to um, to mm. really go after um, their dreams, Lord. I'm mm. just praying that you would give them um, just supernatural co uh, courage, Lord Jesus. Mm. Uh, give them strength, uh, Lord. Give them peace mm. in their minds, Lord. And if if what's going on loop in their mind are negative thoughts or I can't do this, God, or or I'm not good enough, Lord, just begin to yeah. replace those words, God, with your confirmations, Lord, that, you know, all things are possible with you. Yes. You know, we are greater than conquerors, Lord. Uh, so, Lord, I just speak to, to those those yes. Um, yes. those fans, those listeners, Lord. Uh, give them courage, Lord. We're just going to trust and believe that it's done. Yes. Uh, and, yes. you know, I want them to be able to feel a little extra pep in their step today, yes. uh, you know, because they know that um, the God of the universe has touched them and has equipped them with everything that they need. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have been speaking to Kendall Ramsur, and you can go on his website. He is a um, gifted cell cellist. cellist. I have to get yeah. used to saying That's that word. Right. You know, and um, musician. God is using him in powerful ways to infiltrate the entertainment industry with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ultimately, being an example himself of, of a man of integrity mm. and uh, passion for the things of God. So we have another broadcast with Kendall. Join us again on Second Wind.